Yep, thank you, sir. So good morning. Let's try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Welcome to the home of the first EV ecosystem in the entire world. Now, I see some of you nodding your head, smiling. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm guessing some of you have no clue what I'm talking about. In fact, you probably just tapped the guy sitting next to you and said, what's an IV ecosystem? Okay, it's EV. So let's get a couple definitions straight before we get too far along. EV is electric vehicle, all right? You saw one out front, that's the Nissan Leaf. It's got onboard battery storage, 100% electric. We go about 100 miles on a full charge. You've got in the picture here, this is actually in Greenville, South Carolina, not San Francisco. That is a Chevy Volt. It's got onboard battery storage to go about 40 miles, and then it's got a gasoline uh, generator on board to help you get down the road if you need to go further than 40 miles. All right, next word you need to know, EV charger. Okay, these cars are electric. They have a battery on board. They need a charger. You see there in the gray box, that is an EV charger. It just simply charges the battery on the car. Last word, EV ecosystem. Simple math here. Take an EV, take an EV charger, add them together, multiply them on a large scale, and you have an EV ecosystem. And again, the first one right here, Greenville, South Carolina. So today, what we're going to do, I'm just going to tell you about it, frankly. And I hope that when you leave here, you have the skills and the foundation to go back to your own community, to your own state, to your own country, and build your own EV ecosystem. So how did we get started, right? Everyone always asks me that because it's such a crazy idea. A year ago, a couple of us came and we sat down with the city. We had Enterprise Rental Car, Thurso Power, GE, some other local companies. We sat down and said, we're going to build one of these. We're going to do it right here. The city looked at us and they said, we love it. In fact, don't just build it here in the city. Let's go sit down with the county. Let's make this a county city initiative so that you can come to Greenville and go wherever you want, do whatever you need to do in an electric car and never have to, to pull up to a filling station. We said, hey, sounds good to us. So we sat down to come up with a model that would make this possible. And I think in the EV space, for those of you that follow it, it's kind of a chicken or an egg issue. Do you get electric vehicle charging stations and then that prompts people to go out and get the car because they know that they can charge? Or do you get vehicles first? And then if, if businesses and retail realize that there are folks in electric vehicles in town, they'll go install the infrastructure so that you'll come to their venue and charge while you shop or charge while you eat. And we went back and forth on this, and we thought about it. And we said, you know, an EV, an electric vehicle, without a charger doesn't go. And a charging station without a car doesn't charge. So, so it's really not a chicken or the egg issue. It's the reality of you have to have both to make this thing work. So we came up with a model that you see on the screen here. Three real buckets of the model, and this was to get around the whole chicken or the egg, and this was to put cars and chargers here on the ground at the exact same time. So on the left side, and we're gonna go through each one of these buckets, but there's a public pod model, there's a triangle model, and there's a dedicated use model. And each one of these models was targeted at a specific audience here in the Greenville community. First model is the public pod model. And, and I always say this, uh, Zipcar, I think that's a, it's, it's a concept that a lot of people are familiar with. You've been to Washington, New York, et cetera. It's this idea of hourly rentals, okay? Well, we partnered up with Enterprise and they've got their own version, it's called WeCar. And so what we're doing is we're installing a WeCar pod, this public pod of vehicles in the downtown parking deck behind City Hall, behind the Weston Hotel. And this will allow anybody that works downtown, that lives downtown, to rent these cars, again, zero emission vehicles, on an hourly basis or a daily basis. So if you work downtown, somebody dropped you off, you took public transportation, you need a car to go somewhere, hey, you now have one at your, at, at, at your access, something you couldn't do before. If you just need to go pick up a kid from school, you can do it. You can rent the car for an hour. And again, zero tailpipe emissions here. Now, what's unique about this, and again, target market was folks that live downtown, folks that work downtown. We got a call from the Weston Hotel. They wanted to know about their guest. All these folks coming in for conferences, folks that come in for a wedding, may need to run to the malls, may want to run to one of the communities nearby. They now have access to these vehicles for their short trips, 
for a week intro. Now our next model, and we've, there we go. Our next model is what we call the triangle model. This model, we went out to the community and we said, who's using the airport? And we identified about 25 companies that did quite a bit of churn through the airport. So it was either their own employees coming into town or it was their customers coming into town. And we said, hey, what about giving them a green option to come to your facility? So we got these 25 companies to install charging stations at their office. We are, in June, putting in a pod of these public cars at the airport. So the model is now you can fly into GSP, you can hop in one of these electric vehicles, you can go to your office, you can charge there if you want, and then you can go downtown, stay at one of the three participating hotels in downtown, and if you want, charge overnight. The next morning, go back to the airport, or go back to the office and then back to the airport. But you now have this model that your customers or your employees can come in, again, with a zero emissions model. And they can do it right here in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, what's interesting, again, target market, we went out looking for these businesses. That, you know, Some of the big guys in town that had a bunch of folks in the airport. You can probably name a few. But the oddest thing is we had Furman University call us. They said, hey, we want to participate. I said, hey, that's great. I said, but you're a university, right? Once your students are there, they're normally there. They said, that's true, but what about our prospective students? We have prospective students coming in all the time that want to see campus. They have a sustainability, a sustainability campus or, or school on campus. They want to give them a green option. So what's unique about this model and all three models is you design them for a specific audience, but you kind of let them have to go because there are all these other adapters that although you didn't see it on day one, they see it and they make use of it and they take advantage of it. So the last model that we have today is the dedicated use model. And this was for the folks in town that had a large existing gasoline powered fleet. All right, you see Kemet, one of the Fortune 500 companies here in town uh, that has a large gasoline powered fleet. And we said, hey, for six months, we want you to park one of those gasoline powered cars. All right, and in its place, we want you to use an electric vehicle. You had the choice between the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt, depending on which you thought was a better fit. And for the next six months, these companies are driving around an electric vehicle to see how it integrates into their fleet, to see if that's a jump that at the end of these six months, they can make permanent, without, of course, the capital outlay today uh, of making that decision. So it's, as I always say, it's a way to stick your, your big toe in the deep end before you jump right in. So if you can see on the screen here, the stars, this is the EV infrastructure basically the charging stations, in Greenville when we showed up a year ago. Now, in some cases, these stars represent more than one chargers, but on average, you had about 10 chargers here in Greenville, South Carolina. And to my knowledge, there was one electric car. So you talk about a pretty lucky guy, right? He could park anywhere he wanted. <laughs> um, so this is what we had. And now, when I fast forward, this is what you have here today. So you've gone from 10 chargers in one car to over 45 chargers in, I guess, in June when the airport station rolls out, you'll have over 15 cars. So you can see, just looking at this graph, how robust this ecosystem gets overnight. And frankly, if you think about it, do the math. For those of you that live in town, you can now go anywhere, almost in the city for sure, and almost the entire county without being more than a couple miles away from an available charging station. So you now have this robust, ecosystem that you can live in and you can thrive in in your electric vehicle. Now, this model's great. Let's be honest. It's great because it's up and it's running, and that's more than I can say about almost any other model out there. But what else is really cool about this model, and th these are some points that I harp on, because I think ab above and beyond the obvious, which is it's up and running, uh, I think this is really unique and probably one of the reasons that this model should be replicated, and this is the model that should go across the country and across the world. First, I just said it, it's replicable, right? When we sat down to build this model, we didn't want any barriers that were specific to Greenville. If we could do it here, we wanted you to be able to go do it in Charleston. We wanted you to be able to go do it in um, uh, Austin, Texas. You know, you name the city, you should be able to go do it. We wanted it scalable. So if you could do it in Greenville, South Carolina, you ought to be able to go do it in Atlanta, Georgia. You ought to be able to go do it in London, Paris, Shanghai, you name it. There shouldn't be any barriers to scale this thing up. And lastly, the model is sustainable. And that's kind of a duh, right? It had to be sustainable. These are electric cars. 
but it's also sustainable in an economical sense. And, and this is a point I think is somewhat controversial. Um, and, and so for what it's worth, this is my opinion, but, but I would tell you that this is probably the most important thing in this model. And it's sustainable economically. You know, when we came to town, we could have just given out a bunch of cars and a bunch of charging stations and, and, and all the stuff that makes up this EV ecosystem. You could have just given it away. And, and, you know, arguably, you'd be where we are today, right? You'd have the 45 charging stations, the 15 cars. Um, but, but what does that accomplish? You know, I would argue to you that that is not sustainable. You know, no business, small or large, can operate giving stuff away. So if you have a model that people can't invest in, it does not work and it is not sustainable. So what is very unique about this model is everyone has skin in the game. And we all know if you invest in something, if you have ownership of something, you take better care of it. In fact, the folks at Enterprise told me, I thought this was a great joke, they said, you know, nobody ever washes one of our rental cars. <laughs> I thought about it, I said, you're right. And it's the same thing with this model. If you don't own a portion of it, if you are not invested in it, you don't take care of it, you don't use it. So I think that is a very key distinction, in my opinion, that makes this model very unique and, and very successful. Lastly, everybody can play. I'm not going to bore you with a list of everybody that is participating, but we have Fortune 500 companies, we have small businesses participating. We have universities participating, we have the convention center participating. We have uh, the government, we have government agencies participating. So again, this model, there's no one excluded. And, and frankly, everyday citizens can go, you know, I think the rate's like $11 an hour to rent one of these cars. So anyone can play in this model, and I think that's very unique and very important because it, it, it keeps this um, going where others possibly can. So, a couple things in closing. You know, I realize technology is changing. In fact, there's some guy in a laboratory right now that's coming up with a battery that's probably better than the batteries we're using today. There are guys that are coming up with phone apps that can tell you where the next available charger is. There are guys coming up with phone technology that can tell you, you know, if you plan your trip, you can probably go this far without having to charge, so go this route as opposed to this route. We built this in 2011. It's now 2012. Things have changed and things will continue to change. So think of, of kind of the model that I showed you today and the three buckets that I showed you is the foundation on which you should go home and build your own EV ecosystem. Second thing I'll tell you, and this is just my opinion, you cannot do this without a public-private partnership. We were very fortunate here in Greenville to have a strong business community, a strong political community that all sat down at the table and wanted to do this together. I don't think because of all the moving parts, you can do this unless you have a community-led effort. So you've got to get everybody at the table, and they have to be working towards the same goal. And then the last thing I'll tell you, I'll be very blunt about this. You've got to go rent an EV, okay? If you live here in Greenville, there's no excuse. If you paid to sit through today's lecture, you should pay to go rent one of these things. And if you don't live here in Greenville, go find a place to rent one. Because I'll be real honest with you. If we don't rent these cars, if we don't use these cars, we all lose. So you've got to go out there and do it. You've got to tell a friend. In fact, if you have a friend, you tell them about it, and they say, no, you can't build an EV ecosystem. Nobody's done that. Put them on a plane or put them on a bus and send them to Greenville, South Carolina. Let them see it here firsthand that you can do it, and we've done it. Now, the last thing I'll tell you, Ted, is about ideas we're spreading, right? Well, I need all of your help because I really firmly believe that we have an ecosystem here, an EV ecosystem that's worth spreading. And without all of your help, we'll never be able to do it. So help me help you get out, rent a car, and build your own EV ecosystem. Thank you so much.